Hello, beautiful people. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we are covering how to structure your tin whistle practice. The things that you can do to make your practice more effective, the things that you can do to make your practice more rewarding and fun, the goals you can set yourself in order to be able to achieve what you're trying to achieve on tin whistle, and how to make your practice simple. Now, it doesn't matter how long your practice session is, but as everybody knows, it is important to keep it regular if you can. Now, this means making sure that you set aside some time, a few times a week throughout the week. And if it's not a few times per week, at least make sure it's every week at some point. It doesn't matter if that's five minutes here and there, or whether you are one of those lucky people who gets to spend four hours playing Tin Whistle. I've never done that as far as I know. <laughs> but either way, this is how you make the most of your time. And bear in mind, this can work for any length of practice time. So let's start with a nice round figure. Let's say we have an hour to play Tin Whistle. How should we approach our practice? Well, first things first, you want to start and end your practice with what I like to call warm-ups. Now, it's the same as if you're doing a physical exercise. There's always a warm-up and a cool-down period, and playing music is much the same thing. You need to warm up your instrument firstly, you need to get your fingers and your mind buzzing to start this uh, learning experience, so the best thing to do is to do some warm-up exercises. And I like to suggest that maybe 25% of your whole practice time is focused on the warm-up, and practicing your techniques. And this will actually make sure that when you come to using those techniques in a tune, you have them under your belt, you already know them, you don't need to go over them, and you don't need to slow down your progress learning the tune, because you already have all of those techniques down, solidly, in the bank. So what I like to do is start with some simple scales, up and down the whistle, and make sure you do these nice and slowly, because this isn't about speed, it's about precision. And doing anything more slowly will help you become more precise. So as I say, start with some simple scales up and down the whistle. What this will ensure is that you're able to hit every note on that whistle, and that'll get you started for a perfect practice session. Now, one other thing to try is to go up and down the scales between the octaves, like this. What that will ensure is that you know how much breath your whistle needs for those notes, how much push you need, it just eliminates all the guesswork later on in your practice. Now within this quarter, 25% of your practice, it is important to run through the things that you struggle with, and the things that need work, alongside the things that you already know you can achieve. So for example, you could do some rolls, some ornaments, some cuts, some slides, some taps, some trills, whatever you find most difficult. You could also work on your rhythm, your timing. This might be playing along slowly to a metronome. It might be tapping your foot to get you into the rhythm and the groove of things, the beat, um, preferably towards something you're going to be working on later in your practice. But also this gives you the opportunity to work on your breathing and your timing as well. So try all those little tricks and make that 25% a quarter of your practice time. So if we've got an hour, spend 15 minutes. Five minutes warming up, 10 minutes working on your techniques. Now the bulk of your practice is obviously going to be your repertoire, and that means the songs and the tunes that you are learning to play on your whistle that particular day. Now it is recommended that if you're working on one tune, if it's a difficult tune, obviously 
do it nice and slowly. And you need to distinguish between learning and practice. Learning means you're actually learning the notes of the tune, you're familiarizing yourself with the tune. And if you're working from tabs, you do want to listen to that music. So part of your practice might just be listening to the tune over a couple of times and then going in and trying to follow along with those tabs nice and slowly with your whistle. You don't need to worry initially, especially when you're learning the tune, about adding ornaments. Basically, you just need to get your fingers, your, your brain familiar with the tune and the notes that you're playing. So go through nice and slowly and just play the basic notes as they come out. Don't worry about the ornaments. Now, when you've done that learning process and you're familiar with the tune, you know how it goes, you know where the notes are, you know how to put your fingers on the whistle and how it all sounds in your brain, that's the time to move on to practice. Practice is simply repetition. It is uh, being able to look at the tabs and listen to the music and play as you go along without mistakes. And the best way to approach practice is to play the tune again nice and slowly to start with. And when you hit a section that you make a mistake on, don't go back to the beginning, but instead repeat that section that you made a mistake on. Because honestly, if you keep going back to the start, what will happen is you'll play through again and you'll likely mess it up in that same spot. So break it into phrases and when you get to a phrase that you keep messing up, don't go back to the beginning, start again and try and get a perfect take, but repeat that section that you've messed up a few times until you don't mess it up anymore, then go back and start again. Now once you're confident with the tune and you've practiced it a few times and you can play it through without any hiccups, this is the perfect time to add ornaments to your music. Ornaments come in real handy to separate notes, to add little flourishes here and there, to give your music its own signature style. Um, they're great for long notes as well, but you can leave ornaments to a later stage and it does make sense to do it in that way, especially if you've worked on your technique beforehand because you don't really need to learn these ornaments, you already know them. So throwing them into your tune now that you're familiar with it should be super easy. Now there are some tips and tricks you can take into account if you find that you're stuck in your practice. Say you're working on a really difficult tune and you don't feel like you're getting anywhere. One of the most important things about when you're practicing is to have a feeling of um, achievement to have a successful practice, to be pleased with your progress. And if you don't have any progress within that practice session, will you really be motivated to practice again? Probably not. So you want to focus and set yourself goals. And it is okay if you change those goals. Like say, for example, you wanted to play this tune at full speed during this practice and you don't get there. That is okay. So maybe you get to 0.75 speed. That can be a goal and that is still a success. And be sure that if you reach those goals, or when you reach those goals, you celebrate those little successes in some way because that will bring this feeling of happiness towards your practice and encourage you to practice again next time you have the chance. Now going back to that difficult tune, say you're playing a really difficult piece and it's just not working. Some days folks, that's the way it goes. Well, the best thing to do is to go back to a tune that you already know, that you already play well, perhaps an easier one or one you're more familiar with, one you've already mastered, and to play that through a few times. So you get that reward feeling. You've played something nice during that practice session. You've played something that you're happy with. It might not have been the initial tune that you set out to play, but at least by practicing and having an attempt at that tune and then still having the reward of playing something nicely that you already know how to play, you'll still get that happy feeling at the end of your practice session. Now, as we approach the end of the practice session, it is important to go back over that tune that you were working on or whatever you were working on nice and slowly. Because if you can play it through nice and slowly and you can play it through well without making mistakes, that is what will stick in your head. Whereas if you play through it really fast or you play through it at the right speed, adding all these fancy ornaments and you get it wrong, well, guess what? That is what's gonna stick in your head for next time. So you want to play it right before you finish. Even if that means playing it really slowly, go back, play it again, play it slowly and play it properly and let that stick in your head. Now to finish off your practice, you want to cool down just like you would with any other physical exercise. The last five minutes of your practice when you know your time is coming to an end for that session, play something you really love play something that you're good at, play something that you really enjoy and just have fun with it. You can also cool down with some techniques if you really want to, if you enjoy that sort of thing. But honestly, make that last five minutes really enjoyable and that will encourage you to practice again. And folks, 
That is the most important thing: regular practice. Now, if you find at any point something you're doing in your practice isn't working, it might be the way you're approaching your practice session. So, if your way of learning that particular tune is just to start from the beginning and go right the way through at full speed, maybe that's not the right approach. Maybe you need to break it down into sections, or maybe you need to play it really slowly, or maybe you need to start from the beginning and add ornaments right in at the start because adding them later just doesn't work for you. Make sure. Whatever it is, whatever you're learning, you find the right way to do it for you, because otherwise you'll spend a lot of time wasting your time. One final tip I found useful for practice is to have what's called a car whistle, and this tip is thanks to Tin Whistle Tutor. If you haven't checked him out already, I've linked his YouTube channel in the description down below. A car whistle is simply an old, durable whistle, or something strong, something that you like playing. A cheap whistle that you are happy to leave in your car. Now you can put this whistle in your car door, in the glove compartment, anywhere in the vehicle. And when you have five minutes, when you're waiting to pick somebody up or waiting at the airport, you have a whistle there that you can pull out and play. As he says in his video, don't play while you're driving. But play when you're stationary. <laughs> but having a whistle to hand when you have the opportunity to play. So consider taking one with you or putting one in the car. So that is it from me today. That is how to structure your tin whistle practice. I hope this was helpful. If you did find this video useful, please do hit that big thumbs up button and let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you haven't, subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell because then you'll get notifications every time new videos come out right here on my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out some of my other tin whistle tips and tricks you might find useful here on screen. But until next time, happy whistling, and I'll see you folks soon. Bye.